on to designing a hand warmer. This is the thermochemistry lab that, and I believe it's the only thermochemistry lab in the new uh, College Board Investigations. And by the way, I, I, I do want to add the disclaimer that uh, we add to all of our write-ups for AP Chemistry, which is that AP is a registered trademark of the College Board, which was not involved in the production of these and does not endorse any particular vendor's uh, lab. So. Uh, but we have correlated all of them with the College Board investigations. So designing a hand warmer is applying the science practices to connect lab experiences to the real world. And that's again something that you will see a pattern in the investigations. And that is they all have a real world experience element to them. So the challenge in the uh, Hand warmer. This is Big Idea 5, which is thermodynamics, investigation 12. Um, the enduring understanding or learning objective uh, is to investigate and measure energy changes accompanying formation of solutions from common laboratory salts. There is a specific learning objective on calorimetry, so this is the calorimetry lab. There are also a lot of uh, sort of models and theories that they want them to do in the curriculum. And so they really want a student to have a model of solution formation in terms of the interactions between solid particles and solvent particles, and also in terms of what, act, what interactions or bonding forces, intermolecular forces, do you have to break in order to form a solution, and what new ones do you get, and what's the relative energy involved in those things. So those are all part of the curriculum objectives. If we go on, uh, we're, we're going to wait just a minute here as I uh, talk about the format that we've used for all of the advanced inquiry labs. And we believe that if we give you a consistent format, and if the students have a consistent format, then they are more likely to be successful. So we highly recommend that whatever you do and however you do your new labs, that you do so in a consistent manner because I think you'll find that students will be much more successful that way. So there is a, an introduction and a brief background, and I always say the purpose of that is to get everybody on the same page, right? So that we're all sort of starting from the same page in terms of where we are in the knowledge. There is an experiment overview want to get to adapt a current lab to inquiry, a well-written experiment overview is the single most important part of that. Because you really want them to think about, okay, what is the purpose and what are the various ways that I'm going to go about finding out or, or designing a lab to meet that purpose. So writing the experiment overview is truly key. Uh, we give some pre-lab questions again if you want to model some calculations just to get them to think about things. And then, as I said, we begin sorry, every uh, lab with an introductory activity. Um, and that could be either to introduce the technique, it could be to review uh, the, the skills, and, and it might be that they do a rough experiment to kind of give a baseline. You know, because uh, if you don't know where to start, you don't know where to start, right? And so sometimes you need a rough idea of what is the magnitude that I'm dealing with here. Do I need 10 grams of material or do I need 0.1 grams of material? That's part of that rough uh, outline that you need to develop. And then there's what we call the guided inquiry design and procedure. And this is truly the heart of it. Uh, that's, and that's what it's called in every single lab. And it begins with those questions, the inquiry guidance, to get them to think about the video what variables will affect it, what do they need to measure, how do they do it. We talked about doing a pseudo first order kinetics experiment, what do you need to know, and so on. In this case, it would be reviewing, you know, calorimetry, and what's the calorimeter constant, and things like that. And finally, we wrap every of our new advanced inquiry lab kits up with a significant section called AP Chemistry Review, and the subtitle is Integrating Inquiry, Content, and Reasoning because that's what the College Board has asked them to do, is to integrate all of those. And so we've put it into every one of our labs. And so if we go on to the next form, next one, the challenge in the inquiry investigation is to, to design a hand warmer, and they give them a specific target that you have to use a certain amount of solid, a certain amount of liquid, 
actually a certain amount of water, and it has to increase the temperature of your hand warmer by at least 20 degrees Celsius, given those parameters. So the students have to do all of the thought analysis to, to in order to do that. Um, the challenge is 10 grams of solid, 40 milliliters of water. So, but in the uh, part where they design the experiments, you say, but you're not using 10 grams of 40, okay? We're going to use 5 grams of 45, so we're only giving you a certain amount, so they're going to have to extrapolate. So we have pre-measured 5 grams of free solids, calcium chloride, ammonium nitrate, and lithium chloride, and that has 5 grams in each, and he's got 45 milliliters? Right. Okay, and so let's go do the first one. Okay, so those of you that are uh, playing along at home can write these values down. 20.6 is the initial temperature of the water. He's adding them. And in this case, the opportunity for error is that we did spill a little bit, so it was an authentic error. Uh, that's okay, though. It's harder to do this in a workshop than in a laboratory. And so are we getting a temperature increase or decrease? Start with 21, 20.6, and what are we up to? 33. 33. Okay, so we've got about 13. That's actually pretty close to where we were in the laboratory. We have cheated here, and, and you have all of the sample data. Um, one of the things, as we said, and, and Larry has said he's so proud of these, and I'm always so proud of all the testing that goes into them. All of the data in here is real, not made up. Um, I can tell you, having read and having our group test all of the labs, that some of the uh, data, most of the data, in the College Board Lab Manual is all made up. It's true. Um, they have perfect results for analyzing a paint and relief mixture. And the only way that you get perfect results that match the label exactly, and I mean to two decimal places in each and every calculation, is if you've made it up. We don't make up any of our data. It's all there. So uh, that was calcium chloride. And of course, you know, what's all the, you know, we're not going to dwell on it here, but is there a lot here for students to think about? You know, there's the system, there's the surroundings, there's exothermic, endothermic. If I'm measuring a temperature increase in the water, that's the surroundings, right? Um, so what did you get as the temperature difference? It was, let me check my data table, 35.6. Oh, oh. So it's 15 degrees. Okay, and in the lab when we had done it, we got 14.4, and that was with 5 grams and 45 milliliters. But you spilled water. some, so you had less water. So, so how would that affect your... It would be higher, definitely, okay. Absolutely. Okay, and he's also going to do what's next? Ammonium, ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate, okay. Now we want a hand warmer, so we want to increase the temperature, right? Um, the lab gives them five different solids, so they have to present all five different solids. He's going to go ahead and do that. Um, you started with 20.6 again? 20.6. Okay. Uh, just so you know, um, the, the challenge in the design of hand warmer is not just it has to produce this temperature change, but it also has to be the most cost effective, because if you're going to sell something, it does have to be cost effective. And also, it should be the most environmentally friendly hand warmer. So the students are challenged to consider the cost of this, designing this product, and they are also challenged to read the MSDS, or what will soon be the SDSs for all of these, and to consider the environmental applications, implications as well. What did it, what happened here? The temperature. So the temperature decreased. So that, of course, is not an exothermic, but rather an endothermic. So you throw these in there so that the students can distinguish between exothermic and endothermic and do the reasoning and so on. And we're going very quickly through here. Remember what I said. The most important thing in inquiry is really to give significant time for the 
thought processes and the critical thinking and the brainstorming that students need in order to figure out all of this. We don't tell them how to do this in the lab. We give them you know, general guidelines and then they have to decide exactly how they're going to do it. Okay, and what's, what are you going to do next? Lithium chloride. Lithium chloride. He's got five grams. He's adding again 45 milliliters of water. What was your actual temperature decrease last? 7.6. Okay, would be, and that's real close to what we had gotten in the lab, which was minus 8.0 degrees Celsius. So we're pretty reproducible. Um, but you know, good. the person who weighed the solids could have made it here. Ooh, that was me. <laughs> You're right. And I didn't measure them to three significant degrees. <laughs> I kind of did. Yeah. You're right. Okay, and is, what's the temperature doing here? It is going nowhere. It is stuck on 17, which can't be. So, the temperature nearly either going up or down indicates I may have a <laughs> thermometer error. Fortunately, we have a backup system. Here you see. And yes, it's already at 33. And we started at 20.6 because the water was all at the same temperature as room temperature and water. So. Okay. so this is actually giving the highest temperature increase. He's at about 19 degrees temperature increase. Our laboratory data was 19.2. 39.8 um, is 39.9. So. Wow. So that one is exactly uh, yeah. in line with the data that we reported in the uh, experimental write-up. Okay, so you can see that you get a range of temperature, both increases and decreases. So obviously the critical thinking here is for the students is to, first of all, delete, if you will, those that decrease the temperature because that's not going to be an effective hand warmer. On the other hand, <coughs> the opportunity for inquiry is that they would design what? An instant cold pack. So you can certainly challenge them to do that as well. And then they have to now do some calculations to say, okay, if it raised at this amount when I had 5 grams in 45 milliliters, remember the challenge is that it has to increase it by at least 20 degrees when you use 10, uh, 10 grams of solid. Now, they don't get enough material to do that experiment, so they actually have to do the calculations and the extrapolations in order to figure out, well, if I measured this temperature increase with these amounts, then what would I calculate that I would get for these amounts? So they can actually, they have to calculate a moment heat of fusion or, or a heat of fusion per gram, not heat of fusion, heat of solution per gram. And so, so when we look at all of the solids, and we only brought three of them here, you can see that two of them would give the appropriate uh, temperature increase. Two of them, of course, are endothermic, sodium chloride and ammonium nitrate, so those are excluded. You don't have to consider them any further. One of them, sodium acetate, is exothermic, but doesn't leave a large, leave a large enough temperature increase. So really, I only have to look at calcium chloride and lithium chloride, and we give them some cost information for dollars per kilogram for calcium and lithium chloride, and they also have to consider the environment. Now, uh, it's clear from the cost that you're going to be much better off with the calcium chloride than the lithium chloride because there's a cost difference of six times as much for the calcium for the lithium. But what is also true, and again, this is all part of the guided inquiry analysis for them. We're, we're just kind of trying to show you the, the, the thinking that goes into these for the students, uh, is that lithium chloride is a greater hazard than calcium chloride. Calcium chloride being relatively innocuous. Lithium chloride, though, does have some toxicity to it. All lithium salts have uh, toxicity. So the calcium chloride is both uh, less expensive, produces the temperature increase, and is the least hazardous salt. It is truly a non toxic salt um, that compared to all of the others. So they can go through all of that. Finally, 